Alrighty everybody, it has been completed. The motorcycle, after spending like three hours on the dyno, is now ready to rock and roll. And uh, I know you're curious about dyno numbers. Uh, everybody's always super curious. They keep asking me, what's it gonna dyno at? What's it gonna dyno at? It is dynoing at 90 horsepower, just a little under 90 horsepower, and 82 foot-pounds of torque. <laughs> it's a pretty hot motor. Um, yes, this is the 100 horsepower plus package, so you might be wondering why it's not getting 100 horsepower. Uh, I have been told that this exhaust, uh, actually I have been screamed at that this exhaust is not a... Uh, power exhaust uh, so much so as it is a aesthetic and noise exhaust uh, which is fine you know because it looks really cool and it sounds even better and I tell you what 90 horsepower <laughs> this little sportster is still a prodigious amount of power <laughs> so we are going to take it back up to the shop before we get it, before we get it on a truck and take it up to Paul, let's see what this thing's all about, shall we? <laughs> uh, I always like starting this thing up when it's got this big head kit on it because it's just so much more vibrational. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be real fast. <laughs> it's gonna be real fast. Oh man, this is not gonna be safe. Oh, it's gonna need a brake upgrade. All right, everybody. Highway pull time. Aw, semi truck ruined it for me. Dang it. We'll get another one. difference that dyno tune has made Jesus Christ this thing is popped up now what a screamer this thing is now again if we wanted to really get it done we would have gotten some better exhaust system but again I love the look of this compass system we have from Vance and Hines and Sounds so good. Jeez, man. This thing is... It's quick. Now, one thing that this uh, engine is doing, and we'll put the dyno chart up so you guys can see it, is it's doing... Uh, it's not like the normal big V-twin torque curve where it's super high and then it kind of peters out towards the end. It actually builds like a normal motorcycle. Uh, it just builds kind of one-to-one -one torque and horsepower. So, you know, as both increase, they just kind of keep going until it stops. And so, because this pipe is so short, it makes all of its power up at the top. Which I kind of like, you know? Uh, it's, it's a little silly to rev out a motorcycle like this, and the Sportster is nothing if not a silly motorcycle. Boy, do I not want to push this frame, though. <laughs> oh, man. Putting an engine like this inside of a frame like this really highlights how outdated this frame is. Because I can, I can feel it starting to wobble as it gets uh, up to about 90 miles an hour. <laughs> man. That thing has some balls now. <laughs> Man, I'm really glad we did the progressive shocks on this motorcycle before we did this, because I can feel them. Even with the preload tuned for my weight, I can feel the whole motorcycle buckling under the torque of this engine when I hop on the throttle. And I think 
this bike could use even better, more, more stiff rear suspension to help keep that front wheel down because I'm noticing as the front wheel uh, or as the front suspension starts to extend the wheel gets a little bit more wobbly uh, and I don't I don't love that feeling so I suppose you could put a steering stabilizer on it but it might be cheaper just to get a uh, just to get a uh, different rear suspension setup because these shocks are worth money on the second hand market but isn't that, I suppose, the, the nature of hot rodding? You just push the push the bike until you need to find something to fix a problem that you create. Jeez, this thing's potent. It hauls so much more ass than it was ever meant to haul, man. God damn. Can really feel the uh, the way the engine works now. It's not as I mean, it's still ridiculously vibrational. It shakes and rumbles, but now that it's tuned and it doesn't feel so lopy, it feels actually you know popped up. The vibrations are still definitely there for sure, but they're a little bit more what you would want out of an engine like this not not so like it's going to shake your eyeballs out more like you know good vibrations that being said you definitely need to address the pegs on this motorcycle because I can feel it in my toes already now I don't remember what they set the uh, red line to the, the uh, document I've got in my bag with the um, Dino Numbers has the red line where they've uh, set it up at, and again, I don't I don't remember where it is, but I'm not sure I really want to rev this engine out. I will do it, but it's going to feel a little funny. I actually take it back. The brakes feel like they're doing okay. I mean, you definitely need to combine brakes and engine braking now, uh, and you definitely 100% need to have your rear brake on on this motorcycle you cannot just rely on the front brake you need both brakes to tow this thing down to a stop if you're wanting to stop quick fast and in a hurry <laughs> man I uh, I'll tell you what I like it I like it a lot but then again, I've been a Sportster apologist uh, for a long time on the channel, and oh boy, if if this were my Sportster, I'd be very, very happy. <laughs> yeah, sure, it's the 100 horsepower kit. Yeah, sure, I'm not getting 100. I don't even care, man. I really don't. It's just this thing is so, you know, the giggle factor is next level got a little bit of a leak in the exhaust there I'm sure that's not helping but hey I mean the biggest leak is a foot back from there so I'm not sure it's making that much of a difference you know it's funny now that I'm just kind of poodling around uh, on the street the dyno has changed the sound of this motorcycle it doesn't sound like a sportster to me anymore uh, it sounds different it sounds very different it sounds popped up and angry and on one hand I like that you know you put on you put in all this effort and let's not beat around the bush a lot of expense to do all of this to your bike you know it's not a cheap process you want it to sound different you want it to sound mean and potent but Wow, the heat coming off of this thing, too. Jesus Christ. You also kind of want to preserve some of that old school noise that came from this thing, man. I, I really do like the, uh, I like the old school feel and, and the, the shake and rumble and, and the kind of lopey quality that the Sportster had before. This is not a lopey engine anymore. 
you know, sure, it's only 10 and a half to one. Ooh boy, super high performance, right? Well, compared to what it was, yeah, it really is. That's a huge difference. Whew, you can really hear it in the way this thing revs now. The revving, the, the character of this engine, completely different. There, there is, it's, it's night and day. And right now, right now, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that Tube from the Discord server is writing me some I, big giant I told you so. I know he's, I know he's doing it. It's, it's gonna happen. Tube, I know you're gonna send me an I told you so. That we did all of this work to the engine. And it still feels and rides like a Sportster. Yeah, it's faster in a straight line. It's a shitload faster in a straight line. But everything around it is still a Sportster, right? So the frame is okay. The suspension, the rear suspension is really good. The front suspension is serviceable, shall we say. Uh, the brake feels pretty good. But again, we didn't address any of that stuff. And I gotta keep this bike moving too, because I can I can feel the heat. This thing, this thing will now overheat super easily if you don't keep it going. There's no there is no chill to this engine. You know, with the with the torque curve the way that it's set up, the power curve the way that it's set up, it almost feels like it needs a slipper clutch. So you can actually uh, you know, rev match this thing. It's really easy on a bike like this to over rev the engine and lock up the, the rear wheel. And when this thing locks up the rear wheel, it does this all the way down the road. It doesn't do, you know, because the, the rear tire is so narrow, it'll, it'll get squirrely on you. A slipper clutch would be interesting and the six, six speed transmission. You give it this engine, slipper clutch, six-speed transmission, and you got yourself a real performance-oriented motorcycle. Obviously, you need to dress up the suspension a bit, but then we're talking a lot of cash, and we're already a lot of cash into this motorcycle. So here, here I guess is the question. Is it worth the cash investment versus just getting another bike, getting a faster motorcycle. I guess Yam and I will have to have that conversation. So why don't we cut over to that? Um, I'll, I'll be just riding my way through the twisties here, giggling in my helmet, because finally we're riding the Sportster in all of its glory. And I feel kind of triumphant about it. Now how you doing partner, this video is over, but you click on this one right over here, you keep watching yourself some yammy new. Maybe I bend my boots on this one, maybe I give you some other funny memes or something like that. You might not know if you watch the video, so watch the video now, alright?